second Sunday of the great and holy Lent. And uh, as you know, we call it the Sunday of Temptation, where we just read the Gospel of the Lord, who was uh, tempted by the devil during um, the 40 days and 40 nights of his fast. <clears throat> and uh, we read today, this or just now, from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 4. And last night, we read from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 1. And this morning, we read from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 4. So those are the three accounts um, of, of this uh, temptation. <clears throat> Today we'll focus mainly on the first verse um, that St. Matthew describes. Uh, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. <clears throat> um, some people get the, are asked the question, why did, like, who leads us into temptation? Right? In, in, in the Lord's Prayer, we say, lead us not into temptation. What does that mean? Because here in the Gospel, it says the Lord Jesus Christ was led by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, it, to, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So is there a contradiction here? Um, well, what do we mean, more importantly, when we say lead us not into temptation? Does God tempt us? Of course not, right? The devil is the tempter. The devil is the deceiver. The devil is the accuser. <clears throat> and as St. Uh, Paul says, uh, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. <clears throat> so the devil's goal is, is not just to tempt us, but his ultimate goal is to destroy us and to separate us from God, and to not allow us to be uh, one with him and to live with him forever. He wants our soul, right? <clears throat> and God's long-term goal for us is also our soul, but not for it to be destroyed, but to be united to him, right? So, but here's the confusing part. Although God does not tempt, he is okay, or he allows us to be tempted. Why? Uh, as we'll see in it, uh, but there are limits. Um, uh, so the spirit, we have to submit to him. And sometimes if we're at a certain level, he will allow us and even lead us to be tempted by the devil. <clears throat> but um, still give the, the, the devil or the temptation have certain limits to us. <clears throat> okay, um, And the church fathers... Um, that tell us about uh, this more in detail. Um, for example, the scholar Tertullian, he says, far be it that the Lord should seem to tempt. So God does not tempt, as he was saying, as though he were either ignorant of the faith of each one of us, so God knows our faith, right? Or sought to, dis to throne it. So he doesn't want us to be weak in faith. He wants to be stronger in faith. Um, so he leads our life and he, um, and he wants us to lead, to lead our, uh, our life and to help guide our decisions um, and he doesn't want us to be led by ourselves or by the devil. <clears throat> um, and so this is always the conflict, especially we feel this during the fasting time or every, every time we come or plan to do good, there's always this conflict between the spirit uh, and the flesh or the, the evil, right? The flesh is not always evil, but sometimes it's led by its own desires and uh, to be enticed, as St. James says. So, <clears throat> but, so the question is, as St. Paul says, are we living according to the flesh or according to the spirit? If we live according to the flesh, we'll die. Uh, but if by the spirit, he says, you put to death the deeds of the body and you'll live. He says, for many that are led by the spirit, these are the children of God, or these are the sons of God. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Life is a series of opportunities that God has given us to train us to submit to him, to his leadership. Um, and a lot of times we make the wrong decisions and we need to evaluate them to see, um, or even if we don't know, was, was this a good decision or not? When we evaluate our life, we say, was I allowing myself to be led by God or by my own desires or by even the devil. <clears throat> so um, even if God allows us to be tempted, um, it's okay because 
he's not going to leave us. He's not. He's going to allow us to be t- tempted, but not weakened too much. Um, for through, as we'll see, through through the temptations, we get stronger and closer to God if we respond in the proper way. <clears throat> so, uh, Saint Cyprian, an, another early church father, says that. Um, he says, we shouldn't say, do not allow us to be led into temptation in our prayer. I'm sorry, he said, he said, we should say this. Do not allow us to be led into temptation um, in, in our prayer. We're sh- he says, we're shown in this passage that the adversary can do nothing unless God allows it beforehand. So the devil can't tempt us beyond what God allows him to tempt us. So God knows our limits. And let's say if our limit is 10 level of temptation he will stop the devil before it gets to that um <clears throat> and even if it goes above then then that means he has given us a bigger capacity to endure the temptation <clears throat> um and so um most of the temptations though in in our day and age especially now has to do with uh, or the ten- the battlefield does not uh, occur like in the wilderness, for example, like with the Lord, right? But most of it happens in our mind. As St. Paul says to the Corinthians, he says, We don't not war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity uh, to the obedience of Christ. So during our temptation and tribulation, we need to bring our thoughts into captivity. And how does the devil start to tempt and to deceive? In, through our thoughts. Um, he was, as, as we see in these three times that the evangelists describe, of course, the Lord was tempted many times, um, but this is kind of a summary of the different areas of temptation. And even when you look at the story of Adam and Eve, when Eve had the discussion you know, with, with the serpent, he was trying to uh, change her understanding of herself, of God, and of what God wants for us or doesn't want for us, <clears throat> right? So uh, the temptation is not just in the physical things, but it's also in how we see things with our minds. Okay? <clears throat> so um, we fight by the true and proper worship, and, and we have to have courage before the serpent who is under um, and we don't give him uh, any, um, we don't make any compromises when we realize that the temptation is coming from, from him. <clears throat> As we saw, like in, in the gospel of today, when the Lord responds, he responds in different ways, uh, the three times, but also the same, uh, using the same methods, right? So he, as we know, he uses scripture, but also at the at one point he says, "Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord God, and Him only you shall serve." So um, sometimes we think when we enter in temptation that we are too weak, and the devil or the temptation is too strong, but we forget about the strength of God, and we forget ab- about the access that we have to that strength. Um, so um, when Yes, we should feel weak, but strong in Christ. Um, and, and that's how our minds get tripped up when we face temptation. Um, so it's normal to feel weak, but we have to remind ourselves that we have the power of God with us. And the Lord, who already defeated Satan and evil on the cross, gives us that power to trample on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. Um, <clears throat> and so we should have the power at point to say get behind the Satan. Um, <clears throat> so God wants us at some point in our life um, to be tempted, but it should not overpower us. Um, God will set the limits. As St. Paul says to the Corinthians, he says, no temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to man. So it's normal. He's saying it's normal to be tempted. It's, it's a common thing for us to be tempted. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. So again, God knows you, your your ability, and he will limit temptation to that ability, or he will give us more ability to endure whatever temptation he faces. <clears throat> it's kind of like, you know, uh, when someone is uh, exercise, working out in a gym, right, and they have a trainer, right? 
um, the trainer is telling you, okay, do this. I, I know your ability. I've been with you for a while. I know what you can take. So I can't do it. Okay, just try. Um, okay, what if I what what if I can't do it? Well, I'm here. I'm gonna spot you, right? That's what God does with us. Um, God knows our ability, and He wants to push us to our limits. Why? So we can get stronger. Um, that's the whole purpose of the temptation. So I, I don't want to work out today. That it's too much effort. Okay, you're not gonna get stronger. You get weaker. Um, same thing spiritually. We can't just say, forget the fast, it's too hard for me. But no, do something, start at a level, and push a little, little by little, um, <clears throat> so that you see God strengthening you. And, and he knows it's heavy, but he's there. Um, so sometimes we focus on how heavy it is, and we forget on who is behind us. Um, <clears throat> so um, we have to say, you know, I got this because God, God has me, right? Um, so uh, we we, have, we can't forget the, the story of, of salvation, and we can't forget the power of God, right? Um, as as Saint Paul says to the Colossians, he disarmed principalities and powers and made a public spectacle of them. He embarrassed them. Um, uh, he shamed the, the 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 power of the devil, right? Um, because he triumphed over them in in it. <clears throat> so the devil isn't too strong for us. Um, because we have God. But if we don't have God, yeah, he's too strong. <laughs> um, so um, we shouldn't worry that these temptations are, are there because, as again, as St. Paul says, they are common uh, to, to men. Um, so what do we do? We have to endure. Um, we have to ask God for the strength. We have to be willing um, to to go into the battlefield and fight with God's strength that He has given us. Um, <clears throat> for for example, you know, this simple example today, right? The the clocks change. We we had less sleep. Some people start thinking, oh, I, I, I'm I'm weak. I need I need this, but uh, or I I forgot. Y yes, but but if we say. Even though I will be tired, I will come. Think, which we, we have the example of this uh, today, right? <clears throat> and some people say, oh, I, I don't feel as tired as I did last time when I got even more sleep. Because God is blessing. He's giving the grace and he's giving the strength. Right? Same thing with the fasting. This is, this is too hard for me. Or um, uh, I did this last time, but I can't even do, do it this time. Hey, try, and maybe with your guidance of your father of confession, he will even ask you more than what you think you are able to do. Um, or he will take you at one step and say, okay, now that you have uh, been able to attain this level, I need you to go a little bit more. Um, this not out of force, but out of say, okay, you have a little bit more that you can give out of love. And just wait and see the grace of God strengthening you and filling you and blessing you in other ways in your life. Um, <clears throat> uh, same thing with the thoughts. Um, so, uh, like, for example, Origen uh, says when it comes to be, uh, when we say, lead us not into temptation, um, Origen, the scholar, says, um, he says, don't pray that we shouldn't be tempted or tested, um, for that's impossible. God, God is going to allow you to be tempted, he says, but you should pray that you should not be engulfed by the testing or the temptation. So we, we don't want it to overpower us or to drown us in, 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 in weakness and in sin. And of course, God is not going to allow that if we follow his guidance and his direction. Um, <clears throat> so um, some people say, okay, can you explain a little bit more how it's useful other than strengthening us? Um, St. Cyprian says, there's two reasons that this uh, temptation is allowed for us. Number one, so we remind us like the punishment for when we sin. And second, for the glory that when we are tested or tempted. Um, <clears throat> so um, we do have to remember our weakness and our fallen nature and th the fact that we are still sinners. Because sometimes we might get uh, too... Uh, too proud or too puffed up, um, so the the 
temptation humbles me and it protects me from pride or judging or falling into bigger sins um, which are at the door. Um, <clears throat> so that's a good thing. Some, we need to be humbled and the te temptation reminds us of, of our, our weakness. Um, but also it reminds us of the grace of God. And when we experience this whole thing from beginning to end and we see the grace of God supporting us and strengthening us and transforming us, then we will say, thank God I, I had this experience. Yes, it was difficult, but now I see the grace of God and I understand um, his, his love and it turned me to prayer, it turned me to God. Um, the temptation should not turn us away from God, but to him. Um, and sometimes in our weakness, when when we listen to those wrong thoughts, it the the people the person who turn listens to to those doubtful thoughts um, will turn away from God and blame God for the temptation. Um, but God was saying, "No, this was here so that you can come to me and see my strength in you." Um, <clears throat> so that's why we have to endure. As St. James says, blessed is the one who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Um, so our job is just to bear it as much as we can and to follow as the Spirit guides. Um, so during this process, we learn so much. We learn so much about ourselves. We learn about God. We, we gain wisdom. Um, we, we see how God is in our life. We learn to trust more in him. Um, uh, as St. Paul says, we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Um, and uh, we, as St. Peter says, um, we begin to taste just a fraction of uh, the sufferings of Christ. As uh, he says in his first epistle, he says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try. Don't think it strange that you are being tried or tempted um, as though some strange thing has happened to you um, so that's the first step as we've said but rejoice to the extent that you partake of christ's sufferings so just so we feel tempted he was tempted just as we fast he fasted just as we pray he prayed all night just as we suffer he suffered for us the only difference is that we are sinners and he did not sin right um, he was tempted in everything yet without sin um, so that shows that the temptation doesn't equal sin. That depends on us and how much we tap into God's power. The, the temptation is, is supposed to lead to strength and overcoming of sin, even though we might fault sometimes, but we rise in Christ. <clears throat> it says, um, rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. So we consider it a fraction, a small fraction of the, su of the sufferings of Christ, that when his glory is revealed, you may be glad with exceeding joy. So the trial is supposed to lead to joy, not depression. It's supposed to lead, lead to strength, not weakness. It's supposed to lead to union with God, not separation from him. Um, and what does it depend on? Our, our endurance, our, our turning to God and giving him the, the weight and seeing his grace in us um, so that we can uh, say with St. James, blessed is the one who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life. And glory be to him now, come to the age of